and suddenly, there before them were the four who they parted from earlier. Ace and Lotus stood in front of the number nine door. Santos curled into a ball against the wall of the incinerator, holding his stomach. And then there was June. She sat slumped against the wall, exhausted. What had happened? Jumping ran toward June. He skidded to a stop in front of her and knelt down. What's wrong? Are you okay? Her face was pale and her lips dry. When she spoke, he could barely hear her. Jumpy. You came to get me. June, what the fuck is going on? Of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. She mumbled the same words over and over weakly. Jimmy could feel his heart breaking. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. Are you sure? Yeah. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. She was looking towards Santa. Jumpy turned to look as well. Santa grimaced, his face contorted in pain. Seven grabbed him by the collar and roared at him. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hide it somewhere? Despite himself, a grunt of pain escaped Santa's lips as Seven shook him. I don't have it. I got sucker punched and they took the gun. What? Who took it? Well, isn't that obvious? I took the gun. This again? This again? Ace! He did indeed have the revolver in his hand. It was pressed against Lotus's temple. He had her pinned to him with the other arm, and she was shaking visibly. Her fiery attitude was gone, replaced by fear. She didn't dare speak. There was sweat on her forehead. When her eyes went flicking up to the gun pressed against her, they seemed to desperately want to say something. So what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? Or maybe I want to say Hong Gao, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical. Seven's deep baritone rumble shook the walls. Ace sneered. Well, you have me at a disadvantage, and I don't like that. You know me, but I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand my pain? Paying off the the prostitute thing, right? Jinpei's voice was casual. Or at least it was trying to be. <laughs> Another irritating insect. And how do you know that, huh? Jinpei couldn't say, he just knew. Another unexplainable mystery. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no difference to me. This is a waste of time anyway. It's time for me to go. Behind Ace, Junpei could see the red. It was placed in a small indentation of the wall. Quickly, Ace placed his hand on the scanner. It beeped and he forced Lotus's hand onto it as well. Then at last he reached into his pocket of his jacket. He pulled something out and pressed against the panel. The third asterisk appeared on the red. The thing he'd used for the final verification was to brace it from the number with the number nine. But if June's bracelet was actually nine, wouldn't that make his a six? But then the zero one was a six, so what the fuck was his? <laughs> oh god, this is Kubota. I believe I've won this game. His smirk made Jumpy's blood boil. I've had quite a time playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait. Something about the way he'd spoken. Did Ace not know who Zero was? Jumpy's eyes flipped towards Santa. He hadn't moved since they'd entered the room. Santa was still holding his stomach and groaning as if in immense pain. Jumpy wasn't sure if it was real pain, but he wasn't sure it wasn't. It wasn't either. What the hell did Santa have up his sleeve this time? At any rate, the game ends now. I'll escape and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I guess you enjoy your final moments. Wait! Ace, of course, paid no heed to Seven's request and laid hold of the leave on the red. With a sickening sense of finality, he pulled it.
should it wouldn't it work? It won't work, would it? What? What? Why isn't it opening? Lotus tried to take advantage of Ace's confusion and managed to twist herself of it out of his grasp, but at the last second he grabbed hold of her wrist and shoved it onto the red. He waved the number nine bracelet over the red, and then his own bracelet as well. He pulled the lever a second time. No. What is this? Why? The distro route should be nine. It has to be nine. Then why? Why isn't it opening? He done that. Ace's fury and confusion had overridden all other thoughts. He had set down the revolver. It was just below the red. Seven chose the moment to act. He moved far faster than the man of his bulk should have been able to, and he launched the bulk straight at Ace. Grr, er, ar. Have some of this. And some of that. It was over before they knew it. It was a, in a blink of an eye, Ace was on the floor. You done fucked up, Ace. He rolled onto his side, groaning in pain. Lotus ran straight for Junpei. She darted around behind him and stuck her head out, making sure to keep Junpei between herself and Ace. Phew! That motherfucker's crazy! Thank you, Seven. Don't mention it. Seven stood over Ace, his breathing slow and heavy. This one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. After what he did nine years ago, I would've ripped him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. Nine years ago? Ah, you must be. Yeah, you finally figured it out. Dumbass. Ace planted his hands on the floor and shook his head. Junpei walked toward him. He stopped and looked down at Ace with pity on his face. Ace, you killed Kubota, Nijisaki, and Musashido, didn't you? Wait, Nijisaki? Oh, dude, come on. Get with it. <laughs> with your crazy prostitute eyes. He peered at Junpei, genuinely confused. Alright, you don't know yet. Alright, we'll just go through him in order then. Let's start with Kubota. Oh, we've already done this, man, please. My throat hurts. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into do door 5 alone. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. Oh, man, four. In the nonary game, the number 9 was dangerous. Whoever had the number 9 bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. You could add 9 to any number and the digital route wouldn't change. In other words, number 9 could do whatever they wanted. Ace wanted to remove that thread as soon as possible. Ace also wanted to have the number 9 bracelet himself so that he could make use of its power. In fact, he later made use of it in the murder of Nijisaki. Even if his number had been different, Kubota presented a problem for Ace. Kubota had known Ace's past. He knew what had happened nine years ago. Before he told anyone, Ace had to silence him. But last and perhaps most disturbingly, Ace had used Kubota, K Kubota as a test. I keep, I keep wanting to say Kabuto. I really want to say Kabuto so bad. He wanted to know how serious the Nonary game was. Was it true life or death, or simply a harmless prank? He convinced Kabuto <laughs> to break the rules so that you might see what happened. That was why you killed Kabuto. But he was only the first. Next was Nijisaki. Well, everyone was off looking for the missing parts of the red. You ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prostituteness, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki. Chiefly because when you met him, he was dressed like a snake. That was why you thought Nijisaki was a snake. No, that's not. That was Nijisaki? Why? How did. I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was a snake. The snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid. But his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me. But if that's true, why is he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me? Whatever the reason, 
anyone who knows my past is a friend. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. You just waved it in front of the red, verified your own number, then grabbed Nijisaki's arm, and forced it over to scan the panel. And when the door opened, you kicked him in. Nine seconds later, the door closed. Then 81 seconds passed. Poor Nijisaki was dead. You mean to say Snake is still alive? Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm good as new. Thank you for killing the wrong man, but I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. Though, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Ace's self-derision was frustrating. But Jumpy kept his emotions in check and continued. Last but not least, let's talk about Musashido's death. When Plope and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? <laughs> oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed you the pocket watch and you left the room. Ace had been in charge of the notary project. He would, of course, have known the solution of every puzzle. It followed, then, that he knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All he had to do was place the pocket watch and the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, he was able to enter the captain's quarters. Musashida was there. Next to him was an axe. <laughs> that fairly begged Ace to kill Musashida with. He picked up the axe and swung it, burying the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took. Afterwards, Ace returned to the chart room, as though nothing happened. There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? With no reason not to, Junpei had followed Ace to the wheelhouse. When they reached the wheelhouse, Ace slipped his hand into Junpei's vest. He pulled out a piece of paper, the piece of paper Junpei had used to cheat during the boat. But it wasn't the piece of paper that Ace was after. His true purpose had been to slip the pocket watch into Junpei's pocket. It wasn't a very good plan, it had far too many flaws, and the wrong word of discovery could easily have toppled it. Had Mason, but why had Ace so desperate? That was the only thing Junpei hadn't been able to figure out. Musashido's murder is the only thing I don't understand. You obviously did it, but why? Because of this. Slowly, Ace reached down and pulled something out of his pocket. It was a folded piece of paper. Junpei took it and opened it. This is what it said. Number one. There are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of the nine years past. I prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. Ah, so that's what that was all about. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you've confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Perhaps he'll confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. Zero. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. That was why I chose door 1 when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Fortunately for me, you got to it first. Side of hand was the best I could manage to on short notice. Ah, you meant to kill him from the beginning then. Musashido, I mean. I only know Musashido was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him and he answered. He seemed groggy, perhaps he had only just woken from the station. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disorientated when I encountered him. But yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him for the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. 
I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove the so-called witness. Ace had confessed everything. What energy he had left with him, with, uh, had left him with the truth, and he sagged onto his knees. Although he had confessed, his sins were not forgiven. Junpei felt revulsion for the pathetic man on the floor near his feet. But in among the revulsion was a hint of pity. After all, Ace had not been the only person who murdered, murdered those three men. Junpei spoke quietly. Ace, you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes. So it would seem. I was little more than a puppet in many ways. Everywhere I went, everything was already planned. The reds in a large hostel room were, dis were dismantled. Nijisaki was dressed like a snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarter. <laughs> Fucking axe. Usashida was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. Nijisaki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. I'm quite ashamed of myself. But yes. Yes, this was a trap. It was Zero's trap and I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Yeah. By manipulating Ace, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this non game happened. Am I right? Santa? Junpei looked over at Santa. As Junpei spoke, he stood up, his legs still shaking. Huh? The hell are you talking about? I don't know any... Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. I actually guess I should call you Kurashiki, huh? Seven's face was sad as he spoke. My memory came back, kid. You're Kurashiki, no doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. Hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? The person who planned an honorary game this time around was Zero. And Zero is you. Heh. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? Santa smiled sarcastic and something else. Well, I guess there's no point hiding it then, huh? Yep. You got me. I'm Kurashiki. I was one of the kids in an honorary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing. No, I guess two things you got wrong. Number one, I ain't zero. What? I didn't think he was. Wait, what? Sure, I was helping zero out, but I'm really more of an assistant. Like a secretary. But an assistant's only an, an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow zero's orders. Then, if you're not zero, who is? Calm down there, Junpei. Didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Jumper, you just said. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's what the non that's why the nonary game happened. But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. There's another reason you guys were playing a nonary game. To save someone. To save someone? Right. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. What the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. I was there. I saw. Suddenly Seven froze. His eyes went as wide as dinner plates and he spun around toward June. Junpei followed his gaze. She was gone. Where June had been, there was nothing. What the hell? Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? I am very confused. Seven began to mumble to himself, a strange series of words strung together as if his mind wasn't functioning properly. His face was twisted with, e with effort, as though he was struggling with something they couldn't see. He gritted his teeth and prepared his hands against the sides of his head. Ugh, my head. Feels like it's gonna pop. He groaned and fell to his knees. Seven! What the hell is going on? I don't know. I swear to god my head feels like it's about to explode. From somewhere far away they all heard a deep heavy noise. It sounded like a tremendous wheel slowly beginning to, to turn. Santa seemed to have entered an almost trance-like state. His words were calm and measured. What 
was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of a physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Because human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information. That was the experiment. That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. There were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was the building in Nevada called Building Q. Building Q had been built to replicate exactly the interior of the gigantic. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles and copies of identical ones on the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. The transmitters were put in Building Q and the receivers were put in on the gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in Building Q. However, for some reason she was placed on a gigantic with the receivers like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in Group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on a gigantic. I think I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Jumpe. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had the prostitutes? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota? And how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was hung out? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's... The answer is that is easy. He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the morphic field set. It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures in? Imagine a rift that splits in two, like an upside down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom, from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction, it can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from in from the past to the future, but never flows backward. That's why people at the river source that's why people at the river source in the past will never know about these down about those downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never know about enough about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I'm different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river, even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? Who am I, the ninth letter of the Elven Ring? But I'm also Zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really Zero, not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than Zero. Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be Zero. Where did she go? June? No, Akane. Where did you go? Santa? Why is Clover? Oh shit. Freeze. Santa's got the gun. <laughs> oh shit, he's got the gun. <laughs> Guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Get up. Sure he's about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't pulling up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he just looks drained. I guess he's going for the door. He does need to verify to go through that door, but... What's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any numbered doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Then I tell you, I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's gonna give us? What the hell's that even mean? Shit. They're out.
now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. At least Seven's headache is gone. He seems to be alright. Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if the door still opens. Well, looks like the door isn't opening anytime soon. You mean we're trapped? Nah, so it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No. No, you can't be serious. Oh, but he is. Shit. We've got to do something. Maybe we can still get out through door 9. There's the red. Yeah, alright. We can do this. I've just got to... No, it's not going to work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. Oh, 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 oh fuck's sake. Is there any combination that'll work? Ah, oh, here we go. The math mistress. Sure, why not? I don't think I'm going to need him. Ever again. <coughs> A lot of them. A lot of equations. Uh, she doesn't look very happy. What? Well, hey, man, no need to be ripping pages out like that. Jeez. What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that. Alright, at least Seven got it away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. Two, four, five, and seven. Shit. Then there's no other way? We've gotta leave Lotus? Looks like she figured it out though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus? Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! Whoa, where the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected that about as much as I did. Without a. If you're not. Look, he'd be bad, alright? For a cop, he sure doesn't wanna. who doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Yeah. If there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Huh? Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, alright? End of story. Seven. He's right, I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You don't honestly think I'd abandoned you, did you? Ugh, you're all idiots. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however... However? I doubt we would be able to open this door anyway. Even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see, you know, what was going on. But I was able to guess what he was attempting to do early at the Red. Oh, yeah. Just to see, why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. Hmm. Huh. Strange. Are one of our bracelets not what they say it is? Or perhaps this door isn't a knight. You were right. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. Think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit. If we can't get through the door, we can't get out. The walls are way too high. There's no way in hell we could get to that hole Seven popped out of nine years ago. All I can do is stand here and stare at the door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end.
Ha was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums, I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking, what he was feeling, what he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant, and we were as one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonant event melted into him and we became one inside of Junpei. Somehow I found, my, I found myself in Junpei's mind, nine years in the future. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. Eventually it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on, over here. That was my brother. He was screaming. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on, hurry up. We ran down a long straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. A girl watching him began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It's been two hours since the honor game began. It was starting to fall apart. But just when we all lost hope, Light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we called him Snake. Hello everyone, yes. Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fight died down, and we gathered around him. 